And joining me now is forensic pathologist and the author of Brain Damage in Contact Sports, Dr. Bennett Omalu. Pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. Well, you know, the Winter Olympics are underway. Sports are on a lot of people's minds. Um, what should parents of children under 18 know about contact sports? Well, um, it's always been my position, knowing what I know, that no child under the age of 18 should play the high impact, high contact sports. The big six are American football, ice hockey, mixed martial arts, boxing, res uh, wrestling, and uh, rugby. In these games, in every play, your child suffers blows to the head. And there is no safe blow to the head. Repeated blows to the head cause brain damage. If your child plays football, even after just one season, your child has suffered irreversible, irreparable brain damage. Because the brain doesn't regenerate. The brain does not have any reasonable capacity to regenerate itself. I've looked at thousands of brain cells, of, of brains. I'm yet to see a brain cell that is dividing normally to form a new brain cell. Once your brain cell is damaged, that is it. And this is such a big issue for many parents, right? For example, even me. I have an 11-year-old daughter. She's starting to get into sports, team sports at school. What about things like lacrosse or yes. soccer? Are they safe? Yes. In, in fact, this was why I wrote my book. It's a very small book, 100 pages. You could finish it in less than one hour. Such questions. People are not uh, aware of it, but lacrosse has the highest concussion rates. In Does all really? sports, after football. I never would have thought of that. Exactly. So lacrosse and soccer are what I call the less contact, less impact sports. No child under the age of 18 should play lacrosse. Hmm. For soccer, there should not be any heading whatsoever, heading the ball whatsoever in soccer below the age of 18. Why 18? Because that is when your child's brain becomes fully developed from 18 to 25. No heading before 18. Soccer is a high dexterity sport that requires very high levels of brain functioning. Your seven year old child does not have such levels of brain functioning. Are there any safe sports then? I mean <laughs> yes, of course, of course. The safe sports are the non-contact, non-impact sports, swimming, track and field, table tennis, badminton, lawn tennis, basketball, um, uh, baseball, um, and, and so many other golf. You visit the International Olympics Committee website, there are so many of them. In the non-contact sports, repeated blows to the head are not intrinsic to the play. However, accidents can still occur. So what you do, your child must play safe. These games must be highly regulated. And if anybody plays aggressively, you take him or her out of play. My son plays basketball. And there's something his school does, St. Elizabeth and Satan in Elgrove. There's something mm. that the school does that I love so much. So when these kids play basketball, there is no scoring of the basket. Hmm. Nobody scores points. Oh, we are the winner. We've lost. The kids play, they score baskets, and we all have fun. Well, you have said that it is, in your words, child abuse to let kids play football. <laughs> Why? Knowing what we know today. As a physician, every two, three years, I attend child abuse classes. And I must report child abuse when I see it. I'm mandated by law. Knowing what we know today. The fundamental definition of child abuse is the intentional exposure of a child to the risk of injury. Knowing today that just one concussion causes permanent brain damage. Knowing that if a child goes in to play football by 8 a.m. on Saturday morning, by 11 a.m. after he's done playing, he has suffered brain damage. Isn't that intentional of exposure of a child to the risk of injury? Where do you draw the line though, right? Because so many sports come with some element of risk and Athletes, if they're serious about a sport, need to begin training as youths before they're 18 to become really, really good at it. Especially, let's say, for example, at the Olympic level, if someone's playing ice hockey, which you identified as a dangerous sport. I mean, how do you navigate that? You know, that is a cast of the mind that is embedded in our mentality. That may not be true. In 1957, 11 years before I was born, the American Academy of Pediatrics published a position paper in the Pennsylvania Medical Society Journal. 
don't collapse if I tell you this. In 1957, American pediatricians said that no child under the age of 12 should play football, wrestling, or boxing, that these sports do not have any place in any school or the development of any child. Mm. Now, you can't join the American military, the American armed forces, until you're 18. Joining the American Armed Forces at 18 has no way undermined the preparedness or readiness of the United States military. So if you're a child and you start playing the high impact, high contact sports, maybe a child of six years old, plays football, begins to play at six, plays till 17, that's about 11 years, that child must have received hundreds of thousands of blows to his head. So by the time he's 18, his brain is no longer functioning optimally. So he's not playing at the level you would expect him to play. So if we could step back to think, what if we don't let children play till they are 18, they go through intensive training. Mm -hmm. With intact brains, they could take these games to levels we never ever imagined because their brains are intact, functioning at the highest levels, have not suffered any brain damage. Think about that. So if children do not play, do not begin exposure early, by 18, they may take football to exceptional levels that we've never, ever, ever seen or imagined. That's a new way to think. That's a 21st century mentality. Well, you've given people a lot to think about because this country does love football. As you yourself have, have acknowledged, football is like religion in yes. America. But, yes. I, uh, I think every parent <laughs> should buy the book and, okay. uh, and make up your mind. All right. Dr. Bennett Omalu, pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. God bless you. <laughs>